So are you tired of these isekai anime where the hero end up in another world? How about this? It'll be something revolutionary. What if the bad one is taken to another world? I know right, in Asmic as we have never seen such a thing before. The anime starts with a carriage, this is an isekai, so I suppose that's the equivalent to a truck. This shiny forehead brat is the main character. Everyone sucks her cock because she's rich and you know how rich people are, right? Then this generic adult enters the room. Oh god, how is he that generic? He brought a male child so that they can mate. Well, you all know how middle age is. 15 years old in the middle age. Honey, I just invade a castle. How are the kids? 20 years old me. This half wolf lady is so perfect, she's my waifu. Well, at least I'll easily pass my 30s, I hope, but not that much. Anyway, she stumbles and falls lightly to the floor. What the hell is even going on? She hit the ground harder than I thought possible. She remembers her past life when she was an average Japanese teenager who ran away from dogs in Master the Yaoi. Katerina wakes up and someone hammered her forehead while she slept. A few days later, she was in a more expensive bed than my house. There's a bandage on her forehead, the dick clap hurt a lot, I mean, the hammering hurt a lot. She realizes she's living in a game where she's the villain, but that's in the synopsis. They take mental health very seriously in this country. It's the first time I see somebody being exiled for bullying. The opening begins and despite the generic design, the characters are very pretty. Then, there is this meeting with several Katarina. Oh my god, that's gonna be fucking annoying for sure. They talk about the same shit as you with your friends, anime, games, football. But Dybird, which football? The one you want my fellow. She also decides she should improve her swordplay and magic skills. So if someone tries to deport her, she can beat the shit out of them. Mustache Katarina hit the hammer, time to get out of the hallucination. The first thing she does after deciding to implement her combat skills is a little farming. Damn Harvest Moon and Rune Factory Generation. Joking, these games are perfect. Suddenly Gerald arrives with his Lawyer? How can someone look like a lawyer so much? The blonde boy is here to propose That explains the lawyer She gives her hand thinking he's just asking for help to get up When you kiss a girl And she reacts like that At night, Katerina is being sad Maybe you think she's being dramatic But she wants to prevent her fiancé from cutting her belly Her father enters the porch with a character coming from the shadows He may look cute to you But in fact, he's her stepbrother I hope washing machines haven't been invented Another meeting is necessary They do it every time a future handsome guy appears in the anime Luckily, Katerina number 3 has the brilliant idea of leaving him in a box like a puppy Works in Nekopara. Time to run the plan. She starts invading his room without even knocking on the door. What if he's jerk or something? Although these characters are still children, not even pre-teenagers. She takes him for a walk, just a domestic animal. Katerina also shows him this dull river. She's very tempted to drown him down. But she doesn't do that because she prefers to show off her incredible climbing techniques. She's really good. I can't even tell where she's supporting her hands. Katerina fell on Keith and cries for his death. If bullying causes exile, imagine what it causes. Maybe getting rid of him isn't a good idea. Later, they both will play with earth magic to straight the ties that never existed. First, he makes a dancing mud doll, then he creates a giant golem that can eradicate an entire city. Accidentally, if you know what I mean, the golem punches Katarina's face. Getting rid of him is definitely not a good idea. A few hours later Katarina wakes up and goes see Keith. She knocks on the door but he's on a Sasuke moment hating older siblings. Speaking of the Naruto, a flashback happens. These kids are throwing rocks at a bird's nest. Wait, is this one taking the stones from his dick? Is that what the kidney stone disease is? Awesome. Keith destroys the ground killing both boys, now he's a hero. But then... She breaks the door in the shining style. She steps on the splinters, sure a splinter will pierce her foot, and this shit f***ing hurt. They both end up becoming good siblings. She starts the second episode by going to play Harvest Moon. BD dubs, now she has two boyfriends too. She's also upset cause her basil plant didn't germinate. They go to a children's party, it must be the birthday of a cousin or a classmate. Their Katarina is surrounded by a character with a more generic appearance than Katarina herself. She eats sweets like a motherfucker and ends up needing to go to the bathroom. That was the fastest digestion in history, it should be in the Guinness Book. On her way back, she finds a beautiful and flowery garden, with a fountain with jelly water. In the garden there's this scared little girl, she's also the gardener. Katerina shows her how she failed to grow a Barbados cherry tree. Mary decides to help her, they use a cellulose book, attack the earth, pull its hair out, and throw water on it. And after some time the mango fruits grow healthily, can you see them? The fruits? At the end of the day, Mary leaves because she's no longer needed for the main character's interests. Katerina is so villainous that 7 seconds after the girl goes away, she and her brother gossiping about her life. Keith is totally consumed by evil. Another meeting, they're quite frequent. And here's the handsome guy, gray hair with blue eyes, he reminds me of a wolf. Mary isn't killed on the route where she's the antagonist, in fact, she may have a happily ever after. Moral of the story, don't bully. On the other day, Mary tells Katerina that she found Prince Alan in the garden, and how happy she's to be engaged at 10. She seems to be liking Katerina more than her fiancé, which is absolutely understandable. That makes Alan come to have it out with Katerina. It's quite curious the suit they had already invented high school clothes in the medieval era, he even has a jacket tied in his waist. He's mad cause Mary only talks about the protagonist and doesn't give a shit to him. If your girlfriend only replies with ha ha ha, okay, lol, yep, nope, kinda tired right now. Don't worry, she doesn't have a crush on one of her friends, you're just a pretty boring guy. To resolve the differences they make a duel consisting of climbing a tree. I'm particularly a fan of rock paper and scissors, but climbing trees sounds good too. The dispute barely starts and she's already at the top. After that they fight daily, you aren't just boring Alan, but annoying too. They end up deciding it in a dispute over who's better at the piano so that he feels better. You know, your parents probably did this when you were a kid too, so that child who still eats glue at 11 feels better. If you don't know who is the child who eats glue from your childhood, well, maybe it's you. In the next episode, Katerina is reading books, she wants to find a friend whose bookworm is her to talk to. According to her, books are equivalent to light novel, so why don't weeds read 
books? Gerald and Alan are having a tea party, it's organized by children, but it is full of adults. Katerina is already eating like a motherfucker. Once again her ultra-fast digestion makes her find a new character. This time it's this little girl, she's bullied by society for being albino, we live in a society guys. Katerina really needs to shit, but they soon meet again. So she touches her hair without permission, shakes the girl, and makes a repugnant pre-matrimonial holding hands. Still manages to invite her to Katerina's home. If I did that, I'd be fairly sued for harassment. On the other day, the girl goes to Katerina's house. And you know the rule of when a future handsome guy appears. Apparently this boy is a siskon fuck, the last isekai trash flag is raised, the wincess. Although this anime is much better than the average isekai. Katerina says her hair is very beautiful. Sophia explains she has always been bullied for having hair the same color as the elderly. So I suppose Alan suffered from such prejudice as well, right? That was just a joke okay alright. They become close friends, going to each other's houses and lend fate doginshi to each other. Katerina remembers her past life where she also lends fate doginshi to her friend. Nickel thanks the main character for all the support she gives Sophia. It just looks like a fraternal demonstration, but I know incestuous fuck from a mile off. Look at that smile, do you know who else smiled? Exactly, Araragi Koyomi. A time skip happens and they all become the cute girls and the handsome guys who promised us. Now the story will start for real, but this is for another day, probably never. If you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe, I'd like to ask you to watch at least two videos of the channel in a row because it helps me a lot, also make a friend watch this video too, use violence if necessary, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, bye.